Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Home to the backlogs. Back in January, I attempted to beat Pikmin 1 with only yellow Pikmin. And though we put up a good fight, it simply wasn't enough. Our ship fell to pieces in the sky, and our journey was over. Or so I thought. Turns out, a Pikmin challenge runner, Press A, saw that video and became inspired enough to attempt the challenge himself. And not only did he grab most of the parts I didn't, he grabbed all but one. 29 out of 30 parts. The man knew glitches, secret mechanics that are never explained in the game, and overall was just much more skillful at the game than I was in my run. And I had a great time watching him slowly destroy the run that had given me so much... <gasps> well, I know this technically isn't the video, so if you want to jump to the actual video itself, feel free to skip to the next chapter. But we can't just let our honor get dragged through the mud like that. So before we begin, it's back to Pikmin 1. Back to the tutorial area where the positron generator sits lying in the water after I forced it out of that clam that was guarding it. Back to slamming myself into the part repeatedly, attempting to get it into that corner I shoved it into last video. According to Press A, when I get the ship parts to jitterbug on the shoreline, that's actually super important. The part itself is confused about where it should be, and if you end the day and come back tomorrow, something magical happens. Personally, I think the man is just trolling me. There's no way it... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Are you serious? I did this with so many parts, all I had to do was come back the next day instead of resetting? Well, alright then. Guess the challenge is back on. And one by one, it happened. Part after part, piece after piece. I won't go into complete detail about how I got each part I was missing, since it would basically just be a rehashing of Press A's video, but I did improve on some of his techniques. For example, if you dismiss your Pikmin close to this geyser, they'll eventually break it open, which means you can essentially get the part like normal with your yellows, rather than the crazy out of bounds trick that Press A had to do to get all the way to the top of the platform. But seriously, if you don't know about him, give his video a watch. Man taught me a lot about Pikmin that I would never have discovered myself. But after collecting all 29 parts that he was able to, I've finally unlocked the final area, appropriately named the Final Trial. And so, with hundreds of yellow Pikmin in tow and only a single day to do it, I began my search for the final ship part. This area is one giant puzzle, meant to make you use all three types of Pikmin to solve the several puzzles guarding the final boss. Thankfully though, we've overcome so many struggles at this point that we can easily overcome all the challenges the game is throwing at me. I break down the stone wall with ease by throwing my yellows across the gap, throw even more Pikmin across the gap to unroll the bridge, then, while my Pikmin are unrolling the second bridge, I throw a few volunteers through this wall here, completely bypassing the fire geyser traps and allowing me to take control of my Pikmin again from range, running them into the box that currently blocks my path and finishing off the final puzzle. And after breaking down the remaining two walls of the area, we've done it. Full final level unlocked, which means it's time for the final boss, the Emperor Bullblax. Thankfully, the fight itself isn't hard, just time consuming, and probably would have gone smoother if I had actually used some of the multiple bomb rocks around the area to force feed the Emperor and stun him for several seconds at a time. Oh, turns out he also has a jump attack that I've never seen before. I'm so used to just dogpiling this guy with red Pikmin that it's never taken me this long to kill him before, so that was new to me. But after multiple sacrifices and almost an entire day of fighting, We've done it. The Emperor Bullblax is killed, and the last ship part, the secret safe, can be carted back to the ship. And though it was a closer call than I would have liked, we've finally done it. All 30 ship parts recovered using only yellow Pikmin. I, I can't believe it. We can finally go home to Hakate. And so, with one final goodbye, Alamar returns to his home planet, leaving his adventures with the Pikmin behind. Or so I thought. Welcome, everyone, to Pikmin 2. That's right, we're back for more and we've got a different mission this time. Turns out, our return home could not have come at a better time. Our company, Hakatate Freight, is in trouble. While I was gone, another employee named Louie had to take over the delivery business, and he lost an entire shipment of golden pick pick carrots, costing our company thousands, which means the company had to sell off its assets, including my ship. Uh, s some of the things in that ship were mine. Can, can I have them back? It's not enough, though, as the company is still over 10,000 Pocos in debt. Oh my god, that's like a quarter semester of student loans! What are we gonna do- Oh hey, my souvenir. Well, would you look at that. The bottle cap that I brought back from the planet is actually worth money here on Hakatate. Quite a bit, in fact. I guess that singular bottle cap was worth over an entire year's salary. Should, should we be worried about Hakatate's economy right now? And so, with the goal of bringing back more treasure to repay our company's debt, it's time to return to Earth, where we're going to find out. Can you beat Pikmin 2 with only purple Pikmin? After last game, Alamar takes the first landing on this planet very seriously. After all, we know just how dangerous it can be if we don't have a proper ship to come back to at the end of the day. Isn't that right, Louie? 
Well, that didn't last long. But good news! The ship was able to right itself in the last minute and avoid a crash landing. So at the very least, our ship still works. Woo! Oh hey look, Pikmin. I know I haven't been gone very long, but it's good to see the little guys are still hanging in there. And would you look at that, they still remember me. Well, you all know the drill by now. This is the tutorial, so we're forced to use the red Pikmin for the time being. But unlike last time, there are three main differences to the run. The first is that we have a second captain, Louie, who we can switch over to on the fly, allowing us to solve puzzles more creatively and act more efficiently throughout the day. He may not be great at his job, but he does get the job done. The second main difference is that in Pikmin 2, red Pikmin are, in fact, vital to the health of this challenge run. Think of every red Pikmin that I propagate as a purple Pikmin in waiting. You'll see why in a bit. And third, the final main difference is that I'm not only trying to beat Pikmin 2, but I'm also trying to collect as many treasures as possible. Because while we don't have a 30 day time limit like last go around, I do have a competitor. Because after that last video, I reached out to Press A and suggested a friendly competition. Whoever can get the most treasures with only one Pikmin type is the victor. May the best captain win. And so with the force tutorial treasure collected, it's time to officially begin the run. I build up my purple Pikmin in waiting, push my way through a paper bag, then sneak my way to the next obstacle, a breakable wall. Because these Pikmin aren't officially purple, I don't use them to kill any enemies or collect any treasure. They're simply a means to reach our Pikmin of choice, which we do almost immediately afterward, because we've reached the new mechanic in this game, dungeons. When you find a hole in the earth, you can enter it with all the Pikmin in your party. Each dungeon has a specific number of floors, with each floor containing treasures and enemies to find and fight. And when you find another hole in the floor, you can use that to progress to the next depth. This first dungeon is very simple and only has two floors, but it does have a treasure that I very much need to collect, the first half of a globe. This treasure will unlock more areas that I can explore, if I can get it back to my ship. Only one problem, it takes 101 Pikmin to carry it. And as we know, you can only have 100 Pikmin on the field at any given time. So what's a guy to do? Well, that's where our Pikmin of choice comes in. See those violets over there? Those aren't just pretty flowers. Throwing our red Pikmin into the flowers will actually convert them into purple seeds, which in turn makes them into purple Pikmin. Dang, now that's a Pikmin. They're bigger, heavier, and stronger too. Which means our way of playing is going to be a bit different than what we're used to. First off, it only takes a few purple Pikmin to finish off an enemy no need to create vast swarms. Secondly, a purple Pikmin can outright crush an enemy if they're small and if you hit them just right. And if they aren't small enough to crush, you can actually stun enemies when your purple Pikmin comes crashing down, giving you a few valuable seconds to get in some free damage. But 10 purple Pikmin isn't enough. So without much else to do, we escape back to the surface where we conveniently land right in front of our ship. Then it's just a matter of going back to the cave with a new batch of purple Pikmin in waiting, then hatching ourselves 10 more purple Pikmin. Now, you might be wondering, why aren't we just making the purple Pikmin the normal way? And that's because, in an effort to offset how strong purple Pikmin are, Pikmin 2 decided that purples don't get an onion, and are just housed in my ship instead. The game also nerfed purples by making them the slowest Pikmin in the entire game, with the leaf versions being so unbearably slow that it physically pains me to watch them carry treasure. But carry it they will, and as I said before, the game is at least kind enough that we don't have a 30 day time limit this go around. So while it might take all day to get a treasure from A to B, we've got time. So with that said, it's time to get collecting. Though astute audience members may have noticed something. I haven't touched the treasures in this cave up to this point. So why have they moved? Well, that's because dungeons are all technically randomized to an extent. A floor will always have the same treasures and enemies, but exactly where those things are placed is another story. Remember this fact, it'll be important later. Oh, hey, look, a relative of mine. Also important to note is that each purple Pikmin is so strong that it counts for 10 normal Pikmin. So while I currently only have 18 purples, as far as carrying capacity is concerned, I actually have 180. I collect all the beasts and treasures on this floor and, oh, uh, the ship doesn't seem to like being force fed enemies. Apparently they're not worth very much, usually only a poco or two each, but every bit helps. And after converting another 10 reds to purples, I put them to work, carrying the globes slowly but surely back to the ship. Thank God time pauses while you're in a dungeon, am I right? And with that treasure collected, we now have access to a whole new area, which means all new treasure to find. Not only that, but we've officially cleared this dungeon, collecting all three treasures hidden inside. A strong start. I end the day there and receive word from the president of the company that there's no need to rush. Glad we're on the same page. So with that said, let's head to the next area, the Awakening Wood. Huh, you know, this area looks familiar. Oh, that's because it is. Despite things being a little different, this is actually the same level from Pikmin 1. 
I guess the trip home took longer than I thought. Things have really changed since we were last here. In any case, I get my purple Pikmin attacking a berry flower, then do a little exploring with Louie to see what kind of treasures we might be able to collect. Turns out, these berries can be made into a special spray. A spray that, when applied to my Pikmin, gives them super speed in all things, from running to fighting. So a sprayed Pikmin can carry a treasure faster or break down a wall quicker than usual. Useful, to be sure. I prove the effectiveness of stunning an enemy by killing a bullboard with only five purple Pikmin, then make off with the spoils of war. And then I break down a nearby gate to- Oh god, it's one of those cute things! Kill it! Kill it with fire! Oh hey, looks like those things still drop nectar. And just like in the first game, nectar makes my Pikmin flower immediately, giving them a much faster move speed. Which means, while I still aren't quite as fast as I'd like, and still fall behind over a long enough period of time, at least I'm not dying of old age watching them carry treasures back to the ship. Moving on, I make my way to the next available dungeon, the Hole of Beasts. Not a whole lot to see here. The first floor consists of grubs, which are easily dispatched, the second floor is a whole lot of nothing at all, and the third floor, well, I mean, you've got eyes. But good news! Unlike the first game, these flame vents can actually be attacked by Pikmin. So with the right timing, a few purple Pikmin can easily disable them, which means collecting the treasures around the map is no trouble whatsoever. Skipping ahead to the final floor, and we've got our first dungeon boss waiting for us, the Empress Bullblacks. This enemy haunted my dreams when I was younger. No idea why. The boss fight is simple enough. Just throw Pikmin onto her head, call them off when she starts to wriggle, then just sit back and let her roll around the arena a few times, then repeat as needed. With purple Pikmin, this doesn't take too long, and after only three rotations, it's already over. Easy game for babies. We also get the prototype detector from beating the boss, which is both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because it adds a treasure tracker to our HUD. A curse because it sounds like this. But regardless, that's another dungeon completed. Unfortunately, this one was not a perfect clear, as we appear to have missed some treasures. But those treasures are completely out of my reach, since they're actually buried underground and can't be found without white Pikmin, my second favorite Pikmin type. In any case, I decided to wrap up the day by exploring the remainder of the map, and realized I've got several problems to overcome. Just like Pikmin 1, this gate is once again a problem for me. But unlike Pikmin 1, it appears my Pikmin can actually break it down. Which is great, because now I can access- Oh god, oh geez, what's happening? Well, turns out we actually can't break it down. There's one last layer that needs breaking, but throwing a Pikmin onto it gets their ankles wet, immediately causing them to panic. I considered the idea of breaking the rocks here, which would in turn cause the water to disappear, but no dice there either. At least, so I thought. Turns out, with proper positioning and an entire day of tossing Pikmin, you can in fact break the rock. But there's actually an easier way to get around this obstacle, so let's put a pin in this problem for now. No, oh, hey, it's the blue Pikmin. I wonder how Press A's run is going. I mean, his Pikmin of choice are locked behind an electric fence. Surely that's slowing him down a bit. It, uh, it, it didn't slow him down. Oh, hey, look, another globe piece. If we can collect that, we can unlock a new map. All we need to do is figure out a way to fix this bridge. Unfortunately, we can't just throw a Pikmin over to it, since it's a bit too far. However, if we take a Pikmin and throw them up onto this ledge here, we can then use our second captain to whistle them over to the bridge and get immediately foiled by an invisible wall. No matter how far I threw them, that Pikmin simply won't go past the stick. Okay, new plan. That particular section may have an invisible wall, but maybe there's another section that doesn't. Unfortunately, despite my incredible ability to throw Pikmin up walls they absolutely shouldn't be thrown up onto, it appears Nintendo thought ahead on this one too. But I'm not known as the Patience Elemental for nothing. And after several attempts, I was somehow able to get my purple Pikmin to fly up this wall here. Unfortunately, they're just a little too far out of my whistle range. At least, they were, until I remembered that screens are rectangles, and my whistle range is everything the light touches. And just like that, I've got one Pikmin working on the bridge. But we don't exactly have all day to get this done, so I get to work trying to get more purples over to the bridge, where I discover something strange. Throwing purples from the third person camera angle always makes my captain throw the Pikmin as you'd expect, with them bouncing off of walls and being unable to break boundaries. But change it to a top-down point of view, and for reasons I can't explain, my Pikmin no longer obey the laws of physics and can break all sorts of rules. And while it didn't allow me to finish the bridge that evening, learning that trick will undoubtedly become invaluable later in the run. And with the bridge complete and the second half of the globe now available, it's only a matter of waiting until the treasure reaches my ship. Any day now. And with the treasure collected, we've not only unlocked the third map, but we've also finished off 20% of the debt. Nice. With that bit of victory ringing in my ears, it's time to explore another dungeon. The White Flower Garden. The developers of Pikmin 2 had a lot of fun with the dungeon aesthetics, and this one is no different. 
I think we're running around on some abandoned sewage pipes or something of that nature. It doesn't have to make sense. All you need to know is that it's fun to explore. In fact, I was having so much fun that I kind of forgot to keep an eye on Louie and he got eaten by a bug. Oops. But don't worry. Though Louie is down and out for the rest of the day, we can still play as normal with just Alomar. It's just a little harder to multitask without him. I collect all the valuables I can find, then proceed to explore the rest of the dungeon. Fun little tidbit that I noticed, the ship always values things that humans would find expensive, like diamonds and jewels, as only worth a few pokos, while it values things like bottle caps as extremely expensive. It's a cute touch. Anyway, I make it to the dungeon's namesake, where in a normal Pikmin run, I'd be spotting my first white Pikmin. Those little guys are freaky having giant red eyes that let them see underground, poisonous blood that kills enemies upon being eaten, and the fastest little legs in the entire series. God, they're fun. But that's not a mission for today. And because we can't use them, we need to find a way to get past a new obstacle. Poison vents. As expected, throwing my Pikmin into the poison makes them immediately panic. So unless I can find another way to damage the vents, we're gonna have to hold off on collecting the treasures in this room. Which means it's time for the dungeon boss, a burrowing snagret. Thankfully, we already know how to deal with this one. And thanks to my purple Pikmin's incredible strength, this fight takes a single minute to finish, ending the dungeon and unlocking the treasure that completely breaks the game, the five-man knapsack. This little buddy here lets my captain use the rest feature, just like in Pikmin 1. I make my way out of the cave with four new treasures in tow, then test out our new toy. Yep, just like last time. Or at least, almost. Unlike Pikmin 1, it seems that Pikmin 2 wised up to the nudging method, and you can no longer push objects around the map by sleeping next to them. That complicates things a bit. You know what else complicates things? Gravity. Good thing I can just change the camera angle and turn gravity off. This is a silly game. But with that collected, that's enough treasure hunting for one day. Time to explore a new area. The perplexing pool. Oh no, is this? Yep, it's area three from Pikmin 1 again. Water and all. Hooray! And would you look at that. Guess the yellow Pikmin are still up to their lighthearted antics. I would have chosen them again, but bomb rocks don't actually exist in Pikmin 2. At least not in a way that we can actually use them. So, bad news, bad news. There are multiple dungeons and treasures on this map that can't be accessed by my squad. Some of the dungeons are completely submerged underwater, and some treasures are inside enemies that are also completely underwater. And because nudging treasures is a thing of the past, it doesn't matter if we can kill the enemies or not. If it's in the water, it stays in the water. But don't worry, there are plenty of other dungeons and treasures for us to play with. First things first, I unlock any and all shortcuts around the map, then start going after all the treasures that I can reach. Thankfully, because of my Pikmin's freakish strength, I usually only have to get one or two lucky throws before I can bring a treasure into range of the rest of my swarm. Boy, this sure would suck if I was using another Pikmin type, huh? Would hate to see what that looks like. Competitive banter aside, I start making my way through the next accessible dungeon, the Citadel of Spiders, which consists mostly of easy-to-kill monsters and several flame vents that are also easily removed. Oh, and spiders. Lots and lots of spiders. Later, on floor three, the game introduces a node beetles which are harmless until they get near one another, creating electric currents. But just throw a purple Pikmin and shockwaves will knock it over, leaving it vulnerable and easily killed. Do you think this is an Easter egg? Like, is that one of the programmer's dogs or something? I hope it is, that would be cute. Also, fun fact, when diving deeper into dungeons, you don't need to have all your Pikmin with you. So long as a captain can reach the exit to the next floor, all of your Pikmin will follow behind you, which means any hazards that attempt to make accessing the exit difficult can just be ignored. I make my way to the final floor, and begin my fight against the next boss, the Beady Longlegs. Another blast from the past, this boss can be killed the same way as it was in the first game. And with minimal effort, the boss goes down without a single Pikmin lost. Huh, it dropped a key. Funnily enough, it has a special property. With this key in my inventory, challenge mode has been unlocked. Interesting. Very interesting. But with that collected, there's nothing else here. I escape with a good number of treasures, which eliminates 30% of the debt, then escape to the planet's atmosphere to avoid death by Snoo Snoo. Truly the worst death. At this point, I decided it was probably a good idea to replenish my purple Pikmin forces. Because while it's rare for me to lose a Pikmin, it does happen. And without having easy access to an onion, it's better to keep my swarm healthy when I can. Only, there's just one problem. When you have more than 20 purples, the game decides you've had enough fun and takes away most of the purple flowers that spawn in dungeons. Which means that unless you start diving into the harder dungeons, you'll never have more than 29 purple Pikmin at a time. So that's good. To add to this wonderful news, I just got word from the president that it turns out that the loan he took out for the company is actually from Loan Sharks. So, uh, yeah, we should probably hurry. Back to the Awakening Woods, where I do the old toss and cross routine with my purples to get them across to the other side of the bridge, which, with two captains, actually proves to be even easier than it was in Pikmin 1. 
And once the bridge is completed, it's time to go after the shuttlecock. It takes a little finagling, but eventually I find an angle where I can get my Pikmin up to the treasure. And even though my Wiimote got possessed by a thousand angry ghosts and made me drown one of my Pikmin, I was eventually able to get two Pikmin up top to carry the treasure down. Place your bets now. Has the Pikmin 2 AI improved to the point where Pikmin know not to immediately jump into the water, or is it Pikmin 1 all over again? If you bet on Nintendo actually improving their AI, congratulations! You win a free hot dog from your local gas station, as well as a 50% off coupon for a six pack of toilet paper. I suggest redeeming both of those offers at the same time. Back to the perplexing pool, where I take a few minutes of playing with angles before I can find one that lets me get this Vlasic top, big taste big crunch, then back to the white flower garden to see if we can figure out this whole poison vent situation. Resetting the map has made some of the items a bit easier to collect, but my Pikmin will still have to travel through vents to carry it back to the ship. So a solution is still needed. I tried sleeping next to the treasure in the off chance that the game had changed its mind about object collision, but no luck there, and even tried to have the Pikmin carry me into the object to push it through, with similar results. At this point, I had given up on strategy and just decided to throw my Pikmin all over the place when I noticed something peculiar. A Pikmin gets poisoned when they enter the gas, but then they don't. Further testing proved this wasn't a fluke either. Poisoned at first, then immune for a few seconds after. Then, after accidentally pressing the spicy spray button, I made the most of a bad situation and sent my Pikmin running into the treasure, hoping their new speed might give them just enough time to carry it through. And while that didn't work, it did show me something else. Well, I'll be. They can damage the vents. Turns out, those few seconds of poison immunity are just enough time to get an order to my Pikmin and if they're close enough to the vent, they'll do at least one damage to it, meaning they can eventually break it. Unfortunately, this was easier said than done, as it's rare that the Pikmin have enough time to attack without being supercharged. But then it hit me. Why am I trying to get them to attack it with their little baby fists when their true strength lies in being thrown? Oh, that's way faster. And just like that, we're back in business. I did one or two more proofs of concept, and yeah, poison vents are no longer a problem, which means I've collected every treasure in the white flower garden that isn't buried. Now, unfortunately, this strategy doesn't work for the poison gates. The vents themselves are too tucked in for my Pikmin to hit them, and my Pikmin don't have enough time to make attacks against the gate before getting poisoned again. The same is true of the poison bridges as well, so we'll need another way to get around these. But that's a problem for another day. And after a little bit of research and a day of playing around with positioning, the way around most of the problems we've been facing appears. Remember how I said the five-man knapsack would be important? Here's why. Apparently, if you position yourself just right, your Pikmin will get confused when trying to carry you back to the ship and magically walk up walls. It can only be done in a few very specific places in the game, but when it works, it works. Now unfortunately, this doesn't get us around every obstacle, but more options is always a good thing. There's one other dungeon I can allegedly access with this trick, but there's a slight problem. Turns out, if your Pikmin is trying to bring you back to the yellow or blue onion, they'll carry you up this wall no problem, but only the yellow or blue onion. And since I don't have them, yeah. Slight problem. Thankfully, this trick works in the perplexing pool as well. And with proper timing, I can sneak my way up onto this log edge here, then run up the edge to get the yellow Pikmin's onion. However, there's just one problem. I'm not sure why, but uh, I can't whistle down the yellows. I know you can hear me, I can see your ears. I tried messing around with their onion a bit in hopes that it might trigger something or make the onion available when I start the next day, but nothing. There must be another trigger to get them off the tree, like the gate blocking the area being broken or something but the gate is poisonous, so that's not gonna happen. And since the blue Pikmin are trapped behind an electric fence that requires yellow Pikmin open, we're shit out of luck. But don't worry, where there's a will, there's a way. And I have a way. If I use my Pikmin as bait to lure out this creeping mum, I can then attack it so that it falls off the ledge, safely toss my Pikmin up a level, then slap it around a bit until it decides to retaliate, knocking Alamar up onto the ledge with the rest of the Pikmin. And after beating the Snagret guarding the dungeon up here to death, we can break down the gate and make our way into the next dungeon, the Snagret Hole. Huh, that's strange. Never had a dungeon go up before. Oh, oh, I'm getting a very bad feeling from all of this right now. I head down the hole and end up out in the yard. Gonna be one of those dungeons, I guess. Nothing too difficult to speak of for the first few floors, and level three's only challenge was another Snagret, so no problem there either. Level four did introduce electrical fences, but much like the other hazards, it's breakable. So as long as I'm careful and time things correctly, they shouldn't be an issue. But level five introduces a bug that can whistle, which confuses my Pikmin into following it around the map until I call them off. Which wasn't a problem here, but can definitely be a problem later if this bug is ever around hazards. Floor six introduced some puddles, which means I had to reset the floor a few times to get all the treasures to spawn in locations where I could actually reach them. But after that, it's time for the final floor, which consists of the exit and a large circular arena. I'm sure it's fine. Huh, 
I guess it's just another Snagret. Okay, I can handle that. Just throw your Pikmin onto its head and- Oh god, they've evolved! Run away! Unfortunately, this Snagret is a lot harder to hit properly. And I lose a few brave souls to the cause due to poor aiming. But eventually, after a few minutes of panicked running around and frantic whistle blowing, it's finally dead. Dropping the Justice Alloy, which increases my suit's overall defense. So that's good, I guess. Back at the perplexing pool, I use my knapsack powers to once again glide up a stump, which gives me access to the glutton's kitchen. And once I've whistled over Louie and all the Pikmin he has with him, I can enter the cave with a full squad. This dungeon is filled with harder monsters, probably some of the hardest we've faced yet. But the treasures are worth it. Ooh, uh, maybe they aren't. I make my way through what appears to be someone's house, resetting the floors occasionally whenever the game decides to put treasures just a bit too high out of my reach, and just using my anti-gravity throwing skills for everything else. This dungeon is tricky. Not only are there bread bugs everywhere, who steal your treasures and drag it back to their nests, but there are also electric traps, a node beetles that create moving electric traps when you least want them to, and puffy blowhogs that'll knock you down so that your Pikmin are sitting ducks for all of the above. And level 4 introduces something even worse. A wandering spotty bull bear. One of the most aggressive species out there that refuses to leave me alone, no matter how far I try to run. Thanks to a lucky stun, I was able to take it down before it could do some serious damage. But then, the horrifying realization that it was regenerating health sunk in. Meaning that if I kill this enemy too far away from my ship, it'll come back to kill again. For any other Pikmin type this wouldn't be a problem, but my purples are so slow that it's kind of a concern. Speaking of speed concerns, let's talk about level 5. This floor introduces armored cannon larvae, which shoot rocks at your Pikmin, and have a nasty habit of throwing your Pikmin right into the line of fire. Thankfully, some quick whistling will get them out of the way, but it's far too close for my liking. And due to the sheer volume of cannon larvae and other enemies, I eventually devised a plan. Just use a captain as bait to lure the captain larva's attacks, then let my Pikmin collect all the treasure with minimal risk. Easy peasy. Which brings me to the final floor. This floor is nothing but a node beetles, electricity traps, and bread bugs. Simply collect the treasures and bodies from around the map while the bread bug is hanging onto the loot, and you can quickly take out their entire health bar. And I do exactly that. The giant bread bug did its best to pull my Pikmin into nearby traps, but trying to outpull several purple Pikmin is a fool's errand. I also got an eraser, which the ship used to make my spacesuit completely immune to electricity. No complaints here. And so, after resetting the dungeon once or twice to get a few out of reach treasures to play nice, that's the glutton's kitchen 100%ed, as well as 60% of the dead erased. Almost there. Now here's the thing, there's another dungeon out in the water, one that doesn't require blue Pikmin to break it open. And by sneaking along this wall here, we can actually access it without breaking down all the walls that guard it. There's just a teeny tiny small problem. Turns out, you can't enter a dungeon without Pikmin, which is a shame because I really wanted to scout ahead first. So I did what I normally do. I threw a Pikmin within whistling range, called that Pikmin to join my squad, then quickly entered the dungeon- Oh. Uh, okay. That's new. I guess the game refuses to consider any Pikmin who isn't blue as part of your party, since they obviously shouldn't be able to enter. Well, we may not be able to enter that dungeon, but there's still a few more treasures hiding around the dungeons that I've already been to. I collect the last few that I can, 100%ing the Hole of Beasts, as well as the Snagret Hole. However, we're very quickly running out of treasures to turn in. Normally, the Valley of Repose changes from a tutorial level to an endgame challenge, with difficult enemies and dungeons hiding in the second half of the map. But with that second half being completely blocked by a waterlogged gate, and with no Pikmin paths that I can abuse with the knapsack, I'm afraid this entire level is essentially closed for business. With such a large chunk of the game closed off to me, I did reach out to Press A and ask for help, which he graciously gave me, by sending me a video showing someone opening the gate with ridiculous cutscene glitches that require precision inputs and 12 hours real time to pull off. Oh, and it all has to be done on the first day, otherwise it won't work. Thanks bud, super helpful, couldn't have done it without ya. But on a serious note, Press A actually sent me several skips and glitches that were extremely helpful throughout our competition, including the mum glitch that got me access to the Snagret Hole, and the pathing that allowed me to skip the electrical fence, blocking the Bull Black's Kingdom dungeon as well. So, as thanks, I'll say it again. If you haven't seen Press A's channel yet, go give it a look. They do all sorts of wacky challenge runs over there. It's a good time. The Bull Black's Kingdom is exactly what you'd expect it to be, with hyper-aggressive enemies, annoying traps that make collecting all the treasures a practice and patience, and the omnipresent buried treasures that seem to haunt every cave dive I do these days. The game is also taken to dropping things on my head when I least expect it, like free nectar. Or bombs. Yeah, sure, rub salt on that wound. Make sure to get it in there nice and deep. My Pikmin also found, uh, this... thing, which has all sorts of lore implications that I don't want to consider right now. But at the end of the day, we eventually made it to the boss of the dungeon, an Emperor Bullblax. Hey, I just fought you at the beginning of the video. 
Needless to say, he goes down even faster this time, gifting me a new alloy that grants me immunity to fire. Very nice. And with that completed, I hate to say it, but I think that's all the dungeon delving and treasure gathering we can do. Oh sure, we've erased over 70% of the debt, but that's 2300 Pocos still remaining. But don't worry, we still have one money-making avenue left. Collecting enemy corpses. You know, those corpses that are worth one or two Pocos each. Oh god. Considering I'm now committed to harvesting roughly 2300 enemies over the course of a few hours, I went out of my way to clear each dungeon again to find out which one provides me with the most Pocos per clear. And let me tell ya, the results were not promising. In the end, it was the Glutton's Kitchen that gave me the most Pocos on average, with approximately 170 Pocos every 10 minutes. Needless to say, we're gonna be here a while. Oh, and I finally collected some of those purple berries lying around the maps as well. Turns out, they make a bitter spray that turns enemies to stone for a few seconds. That might be useful later. Meanwhile, while I spend hours trying to pay off our debt with compost, the president has actually been snatched by the loan sharks and is apparently about to be buried in a local swamp until the money is paid off. This is a kid's game, by the way. But with one final sprint through the glutton's kitchen, I've finally done it. After hours of slow and steady grinding, i finally made 10,000 Pocos and can pay off the company's debt. And with that, we've done it. We've completed the game and can return back to Hakatate with our spoils. What a ride. It was nice to see the Pikmin again, though. What'd you think of them, Louie? Louie? Oh, God damn it! Well, guess we're not done quite yet. We've technically beaten the game, but I refuse to have another sad ending in a Pikmin run. REFUSE, I SAY! Which means it's time to explore the end game level. The Wistful Wild. This map is as treacherous as they come, with plenty of hard enemies and difficult dungeons. But between Louie being replaced by the president, and our ship now being made of solid gold and developing an ego, I'm sure we'll be alright. And would you look at that! Treasure already! Things are looking... I'm sorry, you want what now? Jesus, what is this? Can someone explain why there are homing rocks now? Hello? Well, I guess that's what you could expect in a post-game level, and that's no less true of the Cavern of Chaos. There are hazards everywhere, from bomb rocks scattered all around the ground, to balloon bugs that add even more bombs to the floor, to an entire level full of fiery bulblaxes. And yes, I tried turning them to stone, and no, it doesn't put out the fire. The essence of despair indeed. This dungeon takes a steady hand and a quick wit to get through unscathed as well as a few creative solutions, like luring this Emperor Bullblax out of the water, then force-feeding it bomb rocks so that my Pikmin can kill it quickly. On top of this, the game sometimes glitches out, making some breakable walls unbreakable. Turns out, this is because a poison vent is too close to the wall. Apparently, poison walls are invincible to any Pikmin other than white. That's just how the code works. And sometimes, when a poison vent is just a bit too close to a breakable wall, the game gets confused and classifies it the same way meaning that despite this wall being normal, it can only be broken by white Pikmin. So that's fun and totally not annoying at all. The game is also introducing all sorts of new enemy types, like this Gatling Groink, which is literally a goldfish infused with a cannon. Hey, uh, Pikmin community, if you all could just do some deep dives into the lore of this here, time for the boss, the Segmented Cropster. The boss fight is simple enough. Get the giant crayfish to roll into a wall, and it'll get stunned. Then just avoid the litany of falling rocks, and throw your Pikmin onto the glowing weak spot before it recovers. Do this enough times, and it'll die quickly enough. Alright, let's see our reward. We can obviously cash in the crayfish itself, but what did it drop? Uh, are we done? I would very much like to be done! The last dungeon, or the last one I can reach anyhow, is just beyond this moat. I use the old toss and cross mechanics again to get past the water, then use our physical superiority to eliminate all of the enemies on the other side. Unfortunately, the groink is another enemy type that regenerates health after dying so this mission was more about fixing the bridge than actually pushing forward, because if we're going to go after the final dungeon, we're going to need some reinforcements. A lot of reinforcements. So for the next hour or two, I grind out getting more purples, which, may I remind you, are incredibly hard to get more of once you have more than 20 in your ship. The easiest and fastest way for me to get more is in the Hole of Beasts, where there's a single purple flower on sub-level 4. Normally you'd go to the Subterranean Cavern, a dungeon that always has three purple flowers, but guess where that cave is located? Did you guess past the gate I can't break in the Valley of Repose? Because you'd be right! After far too long and far too boring a grind, I finally got 100 purple Pikmin to my name, which I immediately put to work carrying this dumbbell. I mean, it's worth 3,000 Pocos, so that's good I guess, but considering I don't need Pocos anymore, it's shallow comfort. Alright, let's get to the last cave. I hire a Pikmin to carry me up and over a wall, totally natural, nothing weird about this at all, then bring all of my Pikmin over to this area so that I can whistle- What is happening right now? Okay, never seen that before, but I know better than to pass up a good thing. This is the final dungeon. We'll take all the spicy and bitter sprays we can get. I decide to wait one more day before entering the dungeon, receive, uh, this. Then, at the start of the next day, 
begin our final mission, the Dream Den. This dungeon is the ultimate challenge. You've got high numbers of enemies, multiple traps sprinkled around to make using your Pikmin difficult, and there are even Gatling growings up in battlements, making them into a trap themselves. Uh, by the way, this one had a treasure in it, and I'm only just noticing while editing this video that there was a ramp up that would've let me kill it. I was so flustered by this point in the run that it didn't even register. So yeah, oops, missed that one. Thankfully, all those spices we picked up proved useful, and I was able to take care of some enemies before they could do too much damage. But other maps in the dungeon are just... oof. Thankfully, I've gotten rather good at fighting with my purple Pikmin, since I haven't had more than 30 purples to my name until recently, and maneuvering through maps with only a small number of flower soldiers is easier than trying to push through them with 100 Pikmin. And so, I delve deeper. Always deeper. Eternally grateful to whichever developer decided that you can use any Pikmin type to break traps. No, please, not the face! Oh, I just ran out of batteries. God's teeth, have I been here that long? As far as the treasures go, there was only a few I couldn't get, one of which was hidden inside this jellyfish. No matter how much I tried to lure it over these two tiny streams with delicious Pikmin meat, it just wouldn't go. And when I killed it in hopes of the treasure being large enough to cart over the streams anyway, my Pikmin thought the best way to the ship was through the water. So unless that jellyfish is somewhere easier if you reset the map, which didn't seem to be the case the few times that I tried it, that's a no-go. The rest of the treasures were more or less accessible, though I think there were one or two that were buried along the way, so those were unreachable as well. But otherwise, I feel like I was able to get far more than I should have. And then, we reached floor 14, the final floor of the entire game. I sent Alomar out to the center of the arena to check out any danger that might be lurking, and instead found Louis sitting on a pile of treasure. And he's alive! I think. But before we can check him properly, we'll have to fight the final boss, the Titan Dweevil. This thing is a monster. It has several different attacks, each one doing a different element, ranging from a water spigot, to a flamethrower, to a stink bomb, to whatever the heck this is supposed to be. Electric mines? I don't know. The way you beat it is pretty simple. Just throw your Pikmin at the individual weapons that it attacks you with, until they fall off its body. At which point you can cart the part back to your ship to keep the arena clean, or just leave it on the ground for later. And after trying to carefully navigate the attacks and utilize my forces, with disastrous results, I decided it was about time I chose violence. Just going completely ham on the throw button until I was able to knock off his electric minesweeper, the water spigot, and his flamethrower in rapid succession which in turn revealed the weak, fleshy endoskeleton underneath. We lost many Pikmin, and the cost was far greater than it could or should have been. But in the end, we destroyed the Dweevil and took its treasure. Oh, and Louie. We also took Louie. Huh. I'm starting to think the ship doesn't actually value us captains very much. But with the Dream Den completed, that's about as many treasures as I can feasibly collect, which means it's time to go home and count up our collection. I've got five treasures from the Valley of Repose, 41 treasures from the Awakening Wood, 25 treasures from the Perplexing Pool, and 36 treasures from the Wistful Wild. Let me just do a little napkin math real quick. 107 treasures total. Triple digits, not bad. Let's see Press A do that. Oh, uh, cut the camera. Carl, cut the camera. Oop, wait a minute. Carl, turn the camera back on. But considering I had to use purples, I'm willing to concede the challenge and give the W to Lemon. It turns out using purples is a way harder challenge, and the fact that I technically had to cheat to complete mine only makes it fair. So, congrats, Lemon. Deal. Signed and sealed. No takebacks. Whew, that was a close one, huh? What? Oh, alright, fine. I feel weird about winning on a technicality too. So I'll tell you what. To determine the victor of this little competition, let's do this the old-fashioned way. There are actually two ways to play Pikmin 2 with a second player, versus and challenge mode, which I unlocked earlier in the run by collecting that golden key. In challenge mode, you have to race against a timer to find and collect the key, which then lets you go deeper into each of the 30 mini dungeons. And if you complete every dungeon without losing a single Pikmin, you get a special cutscene, one that not too many people have unlocked themselves due to how difficult the challenge dungeons get. As for versus mode, it's as simple as it gets. Two teams face off in an arena, trying to gather the other player's marble. You can either steal your opponent's marble, or you can collect four neutral marbles around the map. Whoever collects the marbles first wins. So, a proposal. In order to settle this, Press A, I challenge you to a 1v1 versus match, once on each map. Whoever wins the majority of the ten maps, wins the contest. And then to quell any bad blood, we can play through the challenge mode together afterwards, unlocking the final cutscene and calling it a day. I hereby throw down the gauntlet! Um, I... I actually need that. Let me just... Lifelong rivalries aside, that's Pikmin 2, beaten with only purple Pikmin. This was a lot of fun. I'd almost consider doing it again with a different color. Almost. But if I did that, we wouldn't get to move on to Pikmin 3 and 4. And there's nothing more satisfying than using a challenge through an entire series. Thanks for watching.
a big thanks to Press A for solving my Pikmin 1 problem, and for the help he gave me during this challenge run as well. As a reminder, you can check out his channel to see his side of things, and if you enjoyed this absolute monster of a video, consider pressing the YouTube buttons so that YouTube knows that I YouTube. You know the ones. But other than that, that's all I've got. Take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I'll see you all again soon.